Well, hello and welcome back to more Squash Fit brought to you by England Squash. This, of course, is the series that will get you back on court with all cinders firing. We're going to use all of our expertise and resources, and we have been so far to help you to come back in a way that will help you to manage your body, reduce the risk of injuries, and really help you to thrive and enjoy your game of squash. We've already had the likes of Nick Matthew, Laura Massaro, Tanya Bailey. We've got a lot more guests still to come. We've got Sarah Jane Perry, we've got Paul Carter, we've got Josh Taylor. We've got a whole host of specialists that are going to get you back onto the court so you really can thrive. There's also nutritional tips that you can follow and pick up on the Squash Fit Hub. So make sure you visit it and check those out. They really are very good from our resident nutritionist, Ollie Turner. He, as I said, he puts together some really good stuff. Well, I'm going to be your host right the way through the Squash Fit series. I'm going to be here to guide you from your home all the way back to the court. We're on to session four and well, we've done four sessions now and now it's time to really make sure that you're getting onto the squash court so you can make the most out of these sessions. Um, we do run these sessions live every Monday and Thursday via Zoom and they are of course able to be signed up through the Squash Fit Hub. Anytime you miss any sessions you can also catch up with them there. They are on demand so if you particularly like one then don't hesitate to go to the Squash Fit Hub and check them out. Well focusing on this evening's session we've got a circuit in store for you that's going to really work on the metabolic side of your game. You're going to need this when you're back on the court. Get those lungs and the body are ready to go again. We've got our strength and conditioning guru, Nathan Wells, in the house. He's going to be working with the up-and-coming star of the moment, Patrick Rooney. So we've got two really specialist guests for you. I mean, that I think I've covered just about everything. If you do have any questions to be put to Nathan, I'm not sure Patrick's going to be able to answer any of them, but but maybe he might be able to as well. But any questions, pop them in the chat and I'll put them to Nathan. Anyway, that's it from me. Over to you, Nathan. Enjoy the session. Cheers, Lee. Okay, so today, guys, we're going to start ramping up that intensity. So we're going to do a short, sharp uh, interval session. Um, but as ever, we're going to start with a bit of a warm-up. So those that saw last Monday, we're going to build a little bit on the warm-up we did then. So... Start with, we'll just, if you're on, on court, we're going to do obviously jogging around the court. If you're at home, jog on the spot or around your room or your garden if you're, you're outside. So we're going to start with 30 seconds, just jogging. So three, two, one, let's go. So start getting that blood flowing, get the pulse up, raise the body temperature, getting ourselves ready to go. Looked like you guys were getting quite fired up. I was watching you just before the session started, and it looks like there's a bit of adrenaline flowing, Nathan. Oh, there's got to be when you're hitting a circuit. Ten seconds left. Bit of nervous anticipation for Patrick. Yeah, he's also had two sessions today already, so we're putting him through it today. Okay, hold it there. So this time we're going to do a bit of mobility work. So he's going to, you're going to lie on the floor, on your back, feet flat, knees bent, and just roll your knees out to one side and then back to the other side. We're going to do 10 each way. And this just gets you ready for the sort of the multi-directional stuff you're going to be doing when you're playing, does it, Nathan? Yeah, this is going to loosen off lower back and a little bit of the hip areas, but mainly lower back uh, so when you're rotating especially um, and then be able to get into some of those deeper positions. Once we've done 10 each way, we're going to flip over onto our hands and knees. We did this one again last week. So it's going to reach underneath, chest to one side of the wall, open up and face the other side. So again, 10 on each side for this. Again, in, terms on that. Of, in terms of your hitting, Nathan, this just really sort of frees up and loosens up the arm so you can get a bit of flow and rotation and rhythm going, doesn't it, in your hits? Yeah, so you'll get a bit of, bit of mobility for shoulders, but especially through our thoracic spine to our upper parts um, of, of that torso to being able to, to rotate. You often see... People that get stiff in that, in that area are just really rigid on court and just almost just, just moving their arms and their torso doesn't move. And always hear like you, yourself in camps always talking about flow. So this should hopefully build into your flow. 
just stop you from being too robotic. Yeah. Always helpful. Once we're on this one, we're going to back into the crawling, which we did last week. So from here, Pat's going to go to one side of the room and crawl across to the other side. We're going to go four, four lengths of it. Again, try and keep your hips as low as you can as you go in. Nice, big range of motion. Okay. Pat can mix it up and go backwards as well if you like. So if you want a challenge, you can work backwards. A bit of extra coordination work. If you're finding the backwards a little bit tricky, you can always just, when you get to one side, turn around and go forwards again. So again, we're working through a bit of range in your hips, knees, ankles, shoulders, and also a bit of stability there. A bit of glute work now to get, get those ready and switched on. So we can start with clams again. We did this last week. So lie on your side, feet on top of each other, bend your knees forward, keep your heels together, and then just lift your knee up and down. You're going to do 10 on each leg. Real focus here to make sure those hips are staying on top of each other and not rolling backwards. And Nathan, all this session is going to be very much appropriate to whatever level you're at, isn't it, I think? Yeah, so when we get onto the circuit, the circuit's based on time intervals. So you can judge your intensity based on your level of fitness. So if you really want to push yourself, you can go out hard from the, from the start and just really empty the tank on each effort. If you're just first couple of sessions back, you can ease off from that intensity a little bit. So um, a time-based interval session has that flexibility so you can put it across all different um all different abilities in one session if you're going to do it as a group uh, and you can control it as well as you progress your training so yeah anyone anyone can do this even even yourself and, and, and i can do this please so it'll be good well, i don't know that <laughs> so we're gonna do lateral walks again we did them last week so partial squat and then we're going to step sideways you're going to go 10 each way so again, firing those glutes up, a bit of control around the hip. If you've got a shorter space, you can copy as Pat's doing here, go five one way, five the other way, and then go back and repeat. And again, you're just doing all the different movements that you're going to experience when you're playing, aren't you? So you're working through the different parts of the body, just preparing them for what it's going to, going to have to do when you're playing. Yeah, definitely. Going, looking at forward planes, lateral, backwards. Um, we'll have some up and down well just shortly. So we're going to do glute bridge switches. So if here, back on your back, feet flat, hips up, you can lift one leg up, hold it for a couple of seconds, bring it down and then switch over. When you're switching, try and keep the hips nice and high, don't let them drop. And if you to get a little bit of extra work in the glutes, tense the glutes and it'll help activate them a little bit more and help try and keep your hips level as well. So this one, we're doing five on each leg. And the, and the more you, I guess you just act, you really activate the sort of the glutes to make sure that you stay up in that bridge. Yes. If you relax the glutes, you just, you're going to start dropping down. So by really extending the hips, brings the glutes into, into more play. And then by contracting them as well, just means you're going to get a bit extra bit of work on. Uh, your glutes should feel a bit warm. If you want to go through it again in another time, we can do. But today, I think that should be enough with what we've got next. The next one, we're going to, um, a bit more of a complex movement, uh, bringing a few different night movements together. So we're going to start off by reaching up into the sky. <laughs> Reach down, grab your toes. From there, you're going to squat down, lift one arm up and rotate round. Put the hand down, do the other arm down, and then lift both arms up and stand up. We're going to do that five times. So again, you're going to reach down, grab your toes, squat down, open up one side, Open up the other side, arms up, stand up. So again, more of a complex move and bringing in the whole body all through different, different motions. Getting yourself ready for what we're gonna to do today, but also what you do on court. And just, I think the fifth one coming up as well. Next one, we're gonna take a big lunge forward. So if you're going to lunge forward on your right leg, you're going to put your left hand down on the floor next to your right foot and then open your right arm up and rotate that way. And then step back out, switch legs around, and you can do five on each leg. Again, we're just trying to combine the uh, different movements, uh, upper body, lower body. Obviously, we all know lunging is important on squash, and we've got the rotation there that, that Lee already spoken about in terms of how important that is on court. So. 
It, it really doesn't matter if you struggle at first, does it? Because just trying to, even just wherever, whatever level you're, you're at, just working with that and getting the most out of it, you'll, you'll really get those benefits. And almost, if you find these things harder, there's more gains to be had very quickly from doing this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Pat's got a really good, good length lunge. Uh, for those that haven't got that, by working through this movement, you're going to start working on that mobility around the hip area. Um, and the more you do that, when you get onto court, it's going to feel easier. Um, but yeah, if you can't lunge as long as, as long as Pat, that, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. It's probably, as you just said, you're going to get more benefit from it. Um, and, then, and, and multiple benefits, not just a warm up, but improving movements. The final bit of the warm up, uh, we're going to do a few jumps. So when you squat jumps, you can put your hands on your hips, squat down, and then jump straight back up. We do five of these. So you see Pat's not really pausing between the jumps, which is fine. Um, if you're a little bit less controlled or not as confident, you can jump up and then land and then take a few couple of seconds and, and go again. Um, key points, just making sure the knees are always staying in line with the toes and they're not falling in towards each other. So that's going to finish the first part of the warm up. Um, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the movements and, and demonstrate the movements now uh, that will happen in the, in the circuit so that when you come to each block, you'll know what's going on. So just a quick overview of the block of the circuit. We're going to work, we're going to have three blocks. Each block has four exercises. Each exercise you're going to do for three different time frames. I will tell you them when we get there. Um, and then you get a 60 second rest between each block. So block one, uh, we call it court length. So obviously for those that want to go hard, it's court sprints. And those are taking it a little bit easier, just either running or jogging. Um, yeah, demo, demo one, one, one or two. Is there, is there anything in particular you'd be looking for from this? Uh, for the court length? Keep it yeah, or is it literally just run and run? It's just running. Um, obviously, being controlled, you don't clutch into a wall. Um, but yeah, you don't want to go too easy, to be honest. There's, otherwise, it becomes a little bit of a, of a pointless exercise on it. The next one is alternate lunges. So you're just going to lunge forward and then rotate between left and right foot. Or alternate, sorry, between left and right foot. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can mix up the length so you can go for some longer lunges and some shorter lunges. Again, making it a little bit more game realistic. From here, we've got two options. So we're going to do a burpee. So we're going to just drop down, chest the floor, jump up, jump in the air. If not feeling those or feel that's a little bit too intense, you're going to do the whole thing, but without the jump at the end. So you're going to drop down and then stand back up. Okay. Again, as you get, if, if if you're starting fatigue or you're feeling the, not just not feeling as much energetic at the minute, you could drop down and then you can step your way back up without that jump bringing your feet forward. So there's different ways of, of controlling it. And the final one on block one is just a plank. Just hold a nice core exercise. Keep your uh, hips in line with your shoulders. Don't let them drop too low. Don't let them stick up in the air. So they're the first four exercises. That's block one. So for block two, we're going to do side to side shuffle. So just keep stopping your feet crossing over, just going to shuffle side to side across the room. And then from there, so that follows on would be squats. So we're going to squat down. As we mentioned last week, real focus on those knees staying over in line with the toes, trying to keep the heels flat on the floor. If you can, keep your back straight uh, as well, but it's, that's not the most important part in a, in a bodyweight one today. Next, we're going to go lunge jumps. So you can start in a split squat position, jump up, switch your feet over and where's your focus on this nathan when you're doing those lunge changeovers lunge jumps um you want to be explosive and get off the ground and then as you're landing it, again it's looking at that stability of flat foot knee in line with toes if they are if they're too challenging particularly around the landing area you could just do an explosive lunge so go into that uh, sorry explosive split squat go into that split stance drive up mm -hmm. and then just go back down um okay. so it takes away the, the landing challenge and then the, the final one on this block a Russian twist. You're going to sit on the floor, feet up, and rotate. You can see with Pat here, he's rotating through his shoulders, pointing between his knees. So really get a good rotation. You're not just waving your arms. Um, what he's also doing is lifting his feet off the floor. If you want to make it a little bit easier, put your heels down, keep your heels flat on the, uh, keep your feet on the floor as well. Third block. We're going to do. Obviously, it works a lot better if you're on course on this, but I'm sure you can find some space in your house if you're at home. This is uh, some ghosting, but front corners only. And I'm easy that you choose whatever pattern you want to do, whether it's alternating corners, a few in and one, and then back out.
And then following on from here is a reverse lunge. So we start feet, to, feet nice and square, step backwards, and then just bring yourself back up. So on this again, same with all the other movements we've been doing, looking at front knee being in line with the toes, and then try and keep your feet hip width apart. You don't want to go too much in line or you're going to be a little bit off balance. From there, when we're doing mountain climbers, we will go over these before each, each block, don't worry. Uh, start in the pressure position, you're going to bring one foot forwards, and then you're going to jump them over, switching over, off, alternating which foot comes forwards, which goes backwards. And then the final one is a dead bug. So you're going to lie on your back, your arms are going to stick up in the air, your knees are going to be up, just as Pat's demonstrating, and then alternate your opposite arm and leg extending. Again, here for this one, we want to try and keep the lower back in contact with the ground. If you find that arch is a loss or it's too challenging, you don't have to extend your, your arms and legs all the way to the floor. You can just extend them and have a bit, say, 45 degrees. The lower to the ground they are, the more challenging the exercise becomes. So that's the four ex sorry, the 12 exercises. The way it's going to work, block one, court length, alternate lunges, burpees, or down-ups, and plank. You're going to do 45 seconds of the first exercise. You get a 15-second rest, then 45 seconds of the next, 15 rest, 45 seconds of the next one, 15 rest, and then 45 seconds of the fourth exercise. 15 seconds rest, you're going to go back up to the top and do them all again, but this time 30 seconds each, then go all the way back up and do 15 seconds each. So you'll do each exercise three times, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, and 15. And would you advise to push to your limits or would you sandbag and hold back a little bit? What would be your advice? Yeah. Um, I say it depends on where you're at in terms of your stage returning back onto court. If this is your first or second session, then yeah, definitely hold some in the tank because you, you want to be able to move for the next few days. Um, if you've been back for a few weeks or, or you've been training quite regularly, you could probably push it and, re and really go. You're going to get physically, you're probably going to get um, the most adaptation if you go really hard the word go but also you're going to get the most fatigue from that and if you're not ready for that then it then ease off so yeah if, if you're well trained really go for it if you're just getting yourself back in probably look at about 70 70 odd percent effort to start with and then you can always see how you are that third block and push it again yeah cool so we'll get the timer ready you ready yeah. okay three two one and let's go so it's 45 seconds of court length here. So I think for this one, if you can, try to hold that the same pace as you're going for the whole rep. I guess it's knowing how many strides you take helps, doesn't it? Because then you can really judge your your rhythm and your speed in between walls. Yeah, I think I think you probably fall you probably fall into that as, as you're going. Uh, we've got 15 seconds left. Um, yeah, and he, once you've got into that rhythm, you'll, you'll start to move quite smoothly. I think mean, these guys are so used to having to run some court, court length, so they'll probably know quite easily what their rhythm is. Three, two, one. So it's a 15 second rest, and we're going to go into alternate lunges next. So I, I, hope you're going to add that, I hope you're going to add that time <laughs> penalty on. I knew you wouldn't miss that, Lee. <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's go. Yeah, to try and work all the way through the whole time frame. So again, on this one, if you can, alternate your, uh, you can switch around the length of lunge, but making sure you're nice and stable. So for, whenever you're doing a circuit, it's always important to make sure you, you, you keep really good movement mechanics. There's no point going hard and then having your movement mechanics breaking down because you, you're running the risk of injury uh, and then your, your training is just not going to be as effective. So you're not training okay. the way that you should do. So get the, get the technique right and then, and then push from there. Yeah, definitely. We've got 10 seconds left. Yeah, definitely. I think you can use it as technique training as well. Two, one, and rest. So if you're new to some of these movements, actually putting them into a circuit is a good way of, of just practicing them. It's what we do a lot with the juniors is we'll learn new movements. We're going in five seconds. We've got burpees. And then we, we put them into a circuit so it's a little bit more intense, but in a controlled manner. And let's go. 45 seconds of burpees. This is probably where it's going to start getting challenging. The more explosive the movement, so the more we have to jump and get off the ground is where it's going to start really challenging 
that system and the fatigue and the build up. And this is this gives you that ability to be able to go through a really tough rally, have a brief rest, and then go again, doesn't it? Rather than sort of capitulating and giving a run of points away. Yeah, definitely. I think as you as as you start going more intense, and, uh, fifteen seconds and explosive, you get lactic build up, which is going to really challenge challenge that, that that system. So the better you can work with lactic or clear it out of your system, the more effective you're going to be at, at like say, your repeating effort. Two, one, and rest. And we're going to finish the first cycle with core, with plank. It's a nice little bit of a rest at the end of this block of four. So we're going to go in three, two, one, and let's go. So to me, it's for, for plank, it's important to make sure the hips are up a little bit. So Pat raises hips up a little bit more and keeping that in line with, with the shoulders. You don't want to let them sag or just want it. It takes the tension off the trunk. So you're not going to work the core as much and also puts a bit of extra strain on those that lower back. And if you're on a glass back, you can always check yourself in the in the glass, can't you, the reflection, so you can see exactly where you are. Yeah, definitely. Um, using it as a technique. We were, I think it's something we spoke about last week as well, wasn't it? It's, it's always useful. There's no harm in, in using mirrors and taking videos and photos for yourself to check the technique. Yeah, it's very easy to think you're an immaculate plank and then you're a little yeah. bit wonky. You're more like driftwood. And stop there. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to go back to the top. We're going to go back to court length. We're going to go for 30 seconds here. And in. Three, two, one. Let's go. Right, yeah, let's, see him, can... let's see him work for all of these. All of these court sprints. The full time. Yeah, he's, he'll work all the way to the buzzer on this one. One call in front of yeah, in, in this role, you see a lot of, well, not, not so much of our guys, but in this, this field, you see a lot of interest in planks, put it that way. We've got 10 yeah. seconds left. Three, two, one, and rest there. Happy, Lee. <laughs> yeah, much happier. <laughs> Going back into your turn at lunges. Five. Four, three, two, one, and let's go. So you're probably starting to feel a bit of a sweat coming on now. So this is why this is why the structure of it that we reduce the timings of the intervals as they go down. So you can maintain the intensity you were working at to start with, but the volume starts to reduce. So it just, just supports you to work at a slightly higher intensity for the session. Ten seconds. Still focusing and keeping real good movement mechanics, nice and controlled. Two, one, and rest. It's one of those ones where Patrick makes it look so easy and he can just push. It's almost effortlessly. It becomes an easy sort of lunge for him. But for for the average person, technically, it's that much more difficult. And it's, it's better to just keep watching and getting it all, all right, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you got to think that Pat's been through these sort of sessions Quite, well, quite in many, quite a few years now, um, and that time he's on course. So yeah, like I say, he's, he's affected those movements. Um, but we have some that uh, that have been on program. When they start on program, the movements aren't quite there. So we, we can get them to slow it down and get good mechanics. You just don't want to risk the injury. Three, two, one, and rest. But it is. It does make you feel like, oh wow, that looks. It makes it look really easy. Mm. Well, if we see the sweat pads of puddles, you know he's not going easy. <laughs> well, and also it's then just knowing that it's okay for you to feel like it's a bit of a struggle because Two, actually one. it's very hard to do it yourself. And sometimes when you're watching someone and they're banging it out and it's looking quite comfortable, when you then have that struggle, it feels like that's not normal, but it's completely normal to have that struggle. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's why I like these sort of things in terms of uh, sessions, especially with timings, but... I could train alongside Pat here and probably look in the same state as he is. He'll probably do twice as many reps, but we'll both work to our, our, to, to our max level. It, it just caters for everyone. And rest there. Yours would okay. probably look slightly better technically, Nathan. Oh, I'm not sure about that on some of them. Yeah. <laughs> Five seconds. We're going back up to those court lengths. Last time through this block of four. And let's go. You can see, like I mentioned, with those reducing intervals, Pat's able to keep the same speed throughout this block, which has been good. 
three, two, one, and rest. Ten seconds. You're going back into those lunges. It's incredible, three, isn't it? Because Patrick's breathing is looking one. pretty good so, to me here. Yeah, it's uh, he's put the work in. To be fair, over the last few years to really get into that that situation. I mean, you'll speak to some specialists. Actually, being able to breathe while training is really like properly. Two, one, and rest. Burpees. Uh, having a, like efficient breathing is going to really help you in a session you see some people will start to pant too fast and then it just it makes it a lot harder to bring the oxygen that you need three two one and let's go burpees so, no, so the, no. more, the more oxygen you can take in the the longer the muscles will be able to operate and the the fitter you'll get is that right yeah to be fair the less fatigue you'll get build up that quickly and rest so when your body's working with using oxygen, you're not building up that lactic as much. Um, and so therefore it, it, it fatigues slower. Three, two, one. Once you've not taken enough oxygen in, you're going to get a lot more uh, lactic build up and then fatigue build up. And it just then becomes a lot harder. Um, and then you'll go over the cliff and just plummet and you just won't be able to reach those intensities. Two, one, and rest. And that would be that point of no return, wouldn't it? In a, in a game where you just drop over that tipping point and you just can't get back and you sort of regroup for a couple of rallies and then you're gone again. And it's trying to avoid that so that you can just keep pushing and playing the squash you want to play for the, the whole match. Yeah, definitely. And you can, uh, you can see it when people hit that wall, like to hit the cliff, point of no return, the wall. You see it across uh, like all of them, really. Um, and for some people, it's on court, it's really nice for their legs look like they're made of concrete or just stuck in mud um so now we've got a, a minute's rest we've got 40 seconds left just recap the next exercises on this next block so you've got side to side shuffles squats lunge jumps and then russian twists would you normally minute. write these down so they're easy for you to see if you're doing a circuit on your own yes definitely um you might have just call us out on our cheat that it's unwritten on the back wall behind the camera um, <laughs> but yeah it's I, to be honest, it's not a cheat. Like you want to know what you're doing, and as you're getting fatigued, it's a lot easier if it's written down so you can see. Because to remember 12 exercises in the order, you can just fall apart. So. When you're you resting, Nathan, Three, would you? Two, one, and let's go. When Sorry, you're resting, would you want to keep moving, or? I would say that. It depends for each person. You'll find um, you don't if it's a long rest. Just staying stationary or lay down could be a real challenge. It could cause you to stiffen up. Um, so to say you want to be moving a little bit. Here, with a six-second rest here, you're probably not going to seize up too much. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're starting to feel heavy, it probably makes sense just to move around a little bit and just what we call flush the system a little, uh, and try and get some that lactic out. 10 seconds left. Notice how Pat's feet are not crossing over here, which is really good, which means you can stay nice and balanced. Three. Two, one, and rest. Next one's going to be squats. So for me, the squats are a real important one in the circuit to make sure you do good technique. Some people will just stay really shallow and uh, not get the depth, and therefore you're just not going to get as much work out of them. Two, one, and let's go. So it's not, a, it's not a race. Obviously, if you can do good technique and move quickly, you're going to get more in, therefore more work. But we want to keep good technique, and that's the key, the key thing. Technique is king. So we've got knees in line with toes, nice straight back, feet are flat. And Patrick's not leaning too far forwards or anything like that, is he? He's keeping his back nice and straight as he drops back. So he's got a good sort of range of motion, I guess. Yeah, he's got a good range. I mean, your his torso is slightly leaned forwards, but that's fine as long as the back, the spine is straight. Um, He's so used to squatting with load that you'll have that slight shift forwards. If you have completely vertical, that back, you'd more like to fall backwards and rest there. I mean, everyone's, everyone's squat technique will be slightly different based on their anatomy and limb length, torso length, um, et cetera. Be sure, like me, you're going to be a little bit different to someone that's taller. And let's go into lunge jumps. So again, we can see it's, it's not super fast here. We're going nice and controlled, but nice and 
nice and balanced, nice and stable, knees in line with the toes, front foot's landing flat, and it's a, it's a good rhythm. So for this sort of circuit, then we're looking at keeping that rhythm. We want to keep a, a, a constant intensity. Of course, it becomes it becomes that much harder when you start stopping, doesn't it? And yeah, then it then it becomes a real effort. Whereas once you've got the rhythm and that flow, it sort of the momentum can keep you going. Definitely, rhythm really helps in circuit like this. Two, one, and rest, and then we're going into Russian twist. That is probably I'd say one of the more challenging exercises in a circuit. Just repeated lunge jumps. Three. Two, one, let's go. So really be tempted not to cheat on this exercise to really get good range. Rotate so your shoulders between those knees. The easy way out is you just flap your arms side to side and then you're just not going to challenge that trunk as much. I said, if you can keep your feet up, brilliant. If you're struggling, you can rest those heels down on the floor. Try and keep as well as, as straight a spine as you can. Try not to round your shoulders too much. So what, what part are you sitting on? Just the, the, the very lower back, top of your glutes type sort of area? Yeah, so if you just, if you just sit down normally on, on, on your glutes and then just rock backwards. Um, so it's probably, you're resting around your tailbone, to, to be fair, it's probably the easiest way to think about it. Two, one, and go. If you rock too far back onto your lower back, you'll start to fall backwards quite quickly. Okay, so that's how you gauge how far back you're going. Yeah, and you just won't be able to re rotate. We're back up to the top, side to side shuffles. Two, one, let's go. So, and with this one, Nathan, are you looking for Patrick to sort of be on the balls of his feet when he's moving side to side? Yeah, if you, if you sit on your heels, it's going to be a heavy movement. It's going to challenge your joints a little bit more, um, but also it's going to be slower. So you definitely want to be on the balls of feet so you can, you can land and spring off straight away. Uh, as... as as you would on court. So we could try and mimic the movement to a certain extent, as you would, and rest there. Next one would be squats again. So whenever you're trying to bounce around court, it is good to stay on the balls of your feet. Not the toes though, because that's when you start to hurt, hurt, hurt those toes. Two, one, let's go. So at this point is probably when you're starting to feel pretty heavy in those legs. And this is where technique will start to fall apart. So this is where you've got to really focus on just keeping that following those key points, keeping the knees in line with the toes, torso up so the back's nice and straight. Pat's still getting good depth, which is great. So just keep working through it. If you're struggling, start to slow it down a little bit so you can maintain that good good technique. Would Three, you even would you even two, take a breather one. if you needed it? And rest. Yeah, I think opposed to having a complete rest. Uh, next is lunge jumps. I'd probably try and see if you could just go, like, maybe, yeah, you could probably do one, two reps, pause for a couple of seconds at the top, one, two reps, and, and do it that way. So two, one, let's go. You wouldn't want to stand and rest for too long because obviously it's a short interval and you'd waste that work time, but also it'll be harder to get back started again. So then you've, you've got that caveat that you've got that rest period, that 15 seconds once you finish finish the rep so you you've always got a little bit of a rest period to, to catch your breath get the legs working again if they're, if they're getting into lead five seconds two one and rest and then back into the russian twist we're going in five three two one let's go you just see there Patrick really focusing on the posture and getting the back straight for when he dropped back. Yeah, it was, um, it's just, it's, it's just no point in, in, I guess, cheating it, but also putting the strain through. So he's been listening as we've been, <laughs> over the years and as we've been talking. So he's doing a good demo. <laughs> yeah. It's just that there he's focusing on trying to make sure that back is straight. So. Yeah. Three, two, one. And done. And we're back up to the top, side to side, last time through on these four exercises. And it's just one block left after that. This is this one's Patrick's um, exercise because as well as his incredibly long reach through his arms, he can volley, volley absolutely everything if he can cover side to side like this. Yeah. He does love a volley, old Patrick. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen him before we started this session. 
two, one, and rest. And what's, in, what's good to see there with Pat as he's moving that is his hips are staying fairly level. We're not bouncing up and down like a wave. It shows you're moving quite efficiently as well. You're getting all that movement pushing off sideways as opposed to just bouncing up and down. Three, two, one, and back into squats. Last time through them. And with all these exercises, Nathan, I guess it's really important to keep yourself as um, balanced as possible in terms of your power output. So that one, you know, as a squash player, you become very one-sided, don't you? So it's really focusing on evening yourself out, I guess. Yeah. Three, two, one. And going to lunges. Yeah, definitely. So like using the bilateral movement, but also here, you get an equal amount of work left and right. So you, like say so you, I'm, I'm all for, for doing your weaker leg movements on court a lot just to keep that balance. It helps you so much. And rest there. Russian twist. Because not only will it help you on court if you're getting stuck and you need to go on that side, but it's also going to keep you balanced when you're, you're in the gym or doing any other sort of activity. Three, two, one. Let's go. Because an imbalance is often the cause of an injury. Yeah, the, the, or, you get the overcompensation and stuff, don't you? Yes, definitely. Three, two, one, and rest. That's two blocks down, one left. Is he, is he coming back? <laughs> yes, he's coming back. <laughs> so, last four exercises, we've got front corner ghosting which is why he's nipped off to get a racket so he can make it more uh, realistic. Reverse lunges, mountain climbers, and then dead bugs. And it, we're starting to get into the business end, aren't we? Which is the latter stages of a game where you need to just step it up and push, even though you're really feeling it. And if you can do that, it's the difference between closing out games and, and sort of just falling short of that finishing line. Yeah, I think a circle like this, you've got that mental side where you've got to dig deep, like you said. And if you can bring that into your training, I always like to say to these, to these players, if we train harder than we play, it makes playing actually really easy. So you just kind of put that mental side into your training as well, be it a tough circuit like this, be it some of the sessions they do on the bike um, or even, even in the gym, or, and then obviously the stuff they do on course as well. Okay, so we're going to start with front corner ghosting. Any pattern you like. We're going three, two, one, let's go. So whenever you've been ghosting into any sort of circuit, it's making sure you're doing technically correct movements. So I'm, I'm not going to stand here and tell you the technical movements. Because obviously, there's much more uh, clued up guys than that that will be on these series. But there's no point cheating it. If you're going to ghost, move properly. Otherwise, it just does. There's no. You may as well just start running instead. Yeah, you you want it to look really realistic. So if you put a ball there, then you would expect Patrick to hit it. As soon as you would try and hit a ball and it wouldn't go anywhere, then the, it's not a realistic movement. It's not a realistic shot, is it? Two, one, and rest. Yeah, no, it's like the whole point of using that as one of your exercises, that it has that direct tran transfer. If it's not accurate, then there's, there's no point in it. Five seconds. We're going to reverse lunge. Two, one, let's go. So again, rotating these alternating legs. And a bit of an underused exercise for me, reverse lunge. It just brings in a little bit more posterior training to get those glutes working a little bit more. Yeah, and it's a real control thing as well. I mean, I'm very impressed with how quickly Patrick's doing that because when you do do reverse lunges, the balance initially is all over the place. People tend to bring their back foot round and go directly in line with their front foot, which then throws that balance off. It's trying to make sure keeping those hip width for your stance. And this way, again, using that glass wall or a mirror can help you keep that alignment. Three, two, one, and rest. Mountain climbers. <laughs> <laughs> then we're starting to feel it here on this spot. Yeah, tell him it's an extra circuit after we're done just for <laughs> moaning. Two, one, let's go. And what are you looking for here, Nathan? Good rhythm. Um, 
trying to get a good knee drive. So you can see here with Pat's knees, he's getting them up to, uh, up to the elbow. Um, and this one, trying to be a bit explosive. Obviously, you can do them in more of a running style. But today, we're doing it a bit jumpy. Uh, and just being nice and explosive with those movements. Trying so it's to all not... minimal contact with the floor and trying to push off yeah, once when you you're at the, the back. Floor, it's just going again, yeah, definitely. Trying to, again, nice tempo, good rhythm. The more explosive you can be, the more you're going to get out of it. It is a burner, though. Three, two, one, and done. Dead bug. <laughs> <laughs> Again, all the facials and the sound effects today. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. It's good, though. It just shows the level that, that you need to be pushing at and, and the level that these players work at to be able to do what they do on a squash court. Yeah, all right. It's, it's a really, to be honest, from my side, it's a really enjoyable sport to work in. These guys, they'll give me some, some challenges, but you know you put a session in front of them, they are gonna, they're going to dig deep and work and work hard. I've not come across a sport that are willing to put themselves into, as we say, a pain cave as much as these guys are happy to do it. Mm. Happy might be the wrong word, but they're, they're willing. Ten yeah, seconds. It, it does become a bit addictive and sadistic. <laughs> yeah, I think there is that with some of these. Three, two, one, and rest there. Back up to the top, back into the ghosting. Two rounds left, 30 seconds of each, 15 seconds of each. Tell him not to slip. Yeah, then we're going to avoid the sweat patch. Two, one, let's go. I mean, again, you just look at the balance of Patrick ready to go forwards as well. So the fact that you've got him working in that V um, in the front left and right left, right front, and you can see he's just angled, ready to go forward. So everything's helping him. Yeah, it's, I like where we can get that crossover. I think it's brilliant. And rest there. We're back into reverse lunge. Three, two, one, let's go. It's even now, still been aged so nice and balanced. So you're getting to the end of this circuit. You've done a fair amount of work. Those legs are going to be feeling heavy. Glutes are going to be feeling heavy. Just making sure that movement doesn't break down. So if you need to slow it down, slow it down a little bit. Just make sure it's nice and strong, nice and stable. Yeah, this Two, is where you've really got one. to start to push now. Yeah, dig deep. 10 seconds. Three, two, one, scope. And in a circuit like this, it's when we start saying, like, fight for it. Like you said earlier, they can do that here. You know you can do it when you get onto court. Yeah, it's, it's every time you're playing and there's those questions asked where the little voices come in or you doubt yourself and you think, can I do this? And when you've done these sessions, you go, yes, I can. And then you push on again. And it really is the difference between winning and losing close games. Yeah, it must give you a lot of confidence. And rest there. Dead bug. Five seconds. Two, one, and let's go. Well, almost there. Just keep pushing this one out. One minute's work left after this exercise, and then it's done. It's good. Real focus on staying nice and controlled, controlling that lower back here. If you need to, don't bring your feet down to the floor. Just extend them out further up. Three. Two, one, and rest. Last round, 15 seconds of each exercise. And then it's all done. Five seconds. Three, two, one, and we're going. And again, it's just making sure that when you do your dead bugs or you're lying on the floor, you just don't do it where you're going to be moving 
in terms of hitting. Patrick's quite close, but that's only for the filming purposes. It's just making sure you give yourself enough space to make sure that yeah. there's no risk of slipping at all. And the rest there, yeah, I think in, if we were doing this in a, in a normal session without the cameras, like you say, we'd have been doing that exercise out, out the back. Three, two, one, let's go. Keep pushing, push through. This is where you know you've only got a few, few seconds left. You can really empty that tank. Five seconds. Two, one, and rest. Last explosive movement coming up, and then of course a finish. So anything left in those legs, let's get them out. Three, two, one, let's go. This is where you can push right to the limit, isn't it? Because you, you're right at the end now. Yeah, empty the tank. You want to be, be coming off this circuit knowing you put that work in. Even if you've tempered it down a little bit as it's your first session. And rest there. Last one. 15 seconds of dead bug. Keep the technique. Don't let it fall apart. Finish off in style. Three, two, one. Go. Five seconds. Two, one, and done. Good well work. done, Patrick Rooney. Well done, Pat, well done, everyone out there who's done it as well. Hopefully you've, you know, you've worked hard today. You've earned that, earned that dinner. How would you recover out. best after that, Nathan? Um, to be honest, right now, you probably have a little sit down, <laughs> catch your breath, get some drink, get some fluid into you. Um, cool downs, I think, are very personal. So in terms of people doing it in different ways, you probably want to do a little bit of movement just so you can flush out the system, uh, whether it's some light jogging, some people go and sit on a bike, whether it's just shaking the legs around. Um, I probably, with a circuit like this, do a little bit of uh, do some mobility work and some stretching as well as you feel fit. But they, you could do that straight away now or you could go out, have a shower, get back home um, and then do it afterwards. To be honest, you're just having that, just stopping, your heart rate is going to start coming down uh, and the stretching and the mobility is going to loosen yourself off. I think once it's more explosive, like, like today, then probably a little bit of movement is probably going to be, it's going to be an extra, extra benefit. So whether... Today, Pat might be a bit of jogging around uh, for you guys, a little bit of jogging on the spot or, or uh, on the bike. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, it's amazing how much good work you can do in, in quite a short spell. And, it, and it's the intensity and, and just how realistic it is and how beneficial it is. You do this kind of stuff and do it on a regular basis and it really is going to have a massive impact, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great addition to your training. I mean, that was a half-hour circuit. So if you added that to your gym work, to your normal conditioning, whether it's bike and, and running, and then obviously all the court stuff, for, for the guys that are playing at the top, that's, it's, it's a great addition. It's, it's a, a fully complete training program. And I mean, Patrick's footwork, look, he's like a dancer on there <laughs> in the background. <laughs> he's getting ready for a career change once he's finished dominating the squash world, so... Well, thanks again for your insights, Nathan. And of course, thanks to Patrick Rooney for putting in such a good session and, and giving it everything, especially after doing a couple of hard sessions already today. It really is appreciated. And it's so valuable to get that information and, and that knowledge that you have. So thank you very much. No, cheers, Lee. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, that pretty much wraps up our session here this evening. Don't forget, we're here on Thursday at six o'clock live. You can sign up, there's a link in the chat and you can go directly to our Squash Fit hub and sign up there. It's gonna be Paul Carter doing a ghosting and movement session. So you'll be best off on a squash court. Should be a really, really good session. I've seen him deliver the movement stuff a few times. But for now, that's it from myself, Patrick Rooney and Nathan Wells. We hope you've really enjoyed this session and benefited from it. You've earned yourself a bit of a rest. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday for more Squash Fit brought to you by England Squash. See you then.